What's going on, everybody? On my way home from work, figured I would do a, what I like to call a drive-by video. Uh, as soon as this truck passes by, you are going to see Caesar's Palace, because I am coming home from my job on the strip. Anyway, let's get this party started. So let's talk for a few minutes, just a few minutes. So, one thing that I've been thinking about quite a bit, and it, it comes up in Titus chapter 1, verse 15, where it says, To the pure, all things are pure, but to the unbelieving and defiled, uh, not even their minds uh, are pure. Okay? So, a couple of words we want to look at in this particular ver uh, verse. Pure and defiled. The word pure means clear. Like clear water, uh, clear glass. Um, it can mean clean, but generally, it's in, uh, in this context, it's speaking about being clear. Let's see through. Defiled is not what you may think. The word defiled doesn't mean dirty or evil or bad. It means tinted. Tinted like stained glass. Tinted like a drinking glass. Tinted like uh, the windows in your car or something. And so, what, and what, so what the verse is saying is for those with a clear mind, everything is clear. But to the unbelieving and those whose minds are tinted or filtered through a certain prism, not even their minds are pure. So the context is that Paul is talking about how the Judaizers are coming behind him and everywhere he goes and telling stories about him, uh, teaching false doctrine. You gotta remember that the Judaizers were believers in Jesus Christ, but they, but they believed that uh, you also had to keep the Jewish rituals and laws and, in order to be a Christian. And so Ta Titus is being sent by Paul to find leaders, leaders who can uh, combat this through teaching, mentoring, and just being a great example. And so the application that we have here today is that there are believers, people who are saved, who don't really have faith in God. In other words, in, in other words, they live by this what they call Christian violence, Christian lifestyle. You see it a lot in politics, right? The politicians who are, are on the right say, "Well, I'm a Christian. I want Christian values." Okay, you see a lot of Christians in churches talking about. We need more Christian values in our society. But that's not true. But, you know, and the things that they espouse as Christian values aren't even real. It's just morals. But what's wrong with morals? Well, nothing per se except that that's not God's way. We don't need more laws. We don't need more morals. What we need is more Jesus. That is what we need. And uh, as a consequence, you're going to have what happened in Galatians 6, 7, and 8. Galatians 6, 7, and 8 says that things done in the power of the flesh produce corruption, and things done in the Spirit produce life. The Spirit, of course, is the Holy Spirit, who is God. Okay? 
So in other words, doing things on my own power is going to be corrupt. It doesn't matter if it seems right. Going to church, keeping the Christian values, right? If it's done on my own power and it's done my way, it's corrupt, it's, which means to rot away in Greek. So what we see is believers whose minds are seeing things through their own tinted lens, their own presuppositions, their own traditions, their own idea of what's right and what's wrong. You see it on the media, right? Oh, this politician's a Christian. Oh, this business is Christian because they don't like this and they don't like that and they don't believe in this. But that has nothing to do with being a Christian. Being a Christian is simply I believe in Jesus Christ as my Savior. So, then, what do we mean say when? What do we mean when we say that? We, you know, we need more Jesus, you know, and not more laws, not more rules, not more morals. Well, Galatians 5, 22 and 23. The fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit in Greek means things produced by the Spirit. And again, the Spirit is God, the Holy Spirit, the third part of the Trinity. So what are these things? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Not keeping the law, not you know, bullying people into, you know, submission to your own man-made uh, moral code that you think happens to come from the Bible, which a lot of times it doesn't. And it's the Holy Spirit that will convict people. It is the Holy Spirit that will reach out to people. You know, it's God that changes lives. Jesus changes lives not your own moral code and what you have is a bunch of religious zealots who hate people, condemn people beat people up there is no love, joy and peace there's follow the rules or else God hates you and you're going to hell because you know you do this and that so what we need, my friends, is Jesus. We just need Jesus. Let Jesus do it. Let Jesus work it out. We need Jesus. Let's love one another. Why? Because God is love. 1 John 4, 7 and 8. And he who knows not love knows not God because God is love. So... That being said, my friends, I will catch you next time. And uh, like and subscribe and comment because I want to have discussions. Catch you later.